you do not have to micromanage your phone's charging. You just don't. And not because your time is worth so much more than the dozens of dollars it might save you over the life of your phone, but because modern phones use machine learning and artificial intelligence to manage charging in ways stranger and more sophisticated than almost any human could ever match. And I know, I know, some people will tell you otherwise, even insist otherwise, but none of that has been true in ages, like since blackberries and trios roamed the earth ages, and I'm gonna explain to you why, and I mean exactly, precisely why. Should you stop your phone from charging past 80%? And no. Charging past 80% isn't a problem. Staying at a high charge state for an extended period of time is a problem. If you wanna charge up to 100% and then stop, that's fine. It's just best not to keep constantly charging beyond that, at least not for optimal long-term battery health. But honestly, what kind of sense would it make if the only way to maintain 100% charging capacity was by only ever charging to 80% so it wouldn't drop to 80% which is all you've ever been charging to anyway. That kind of sense that doesn't, of course. Most phones now have optimization or adaptive settings that you can go into and enable. For example, that'll charge up to 80% and then idle there overnight and only ever go to 100% right before it thinks you're about to get up and start your day or right before you've set an alarm to go off. Basically, why make the humans worry constantly when the machines can just handle all of that automatically? So if you are at all worried about it and you wanna baby your battery as best you can, you can just flip on those settings. Or if you're at your desk all day, every day, just don't leave your phone on the charger all day, every day with you. Just top it up when you need to, if you need to, before you go. Should you start charging before going under 20%? Okay, so deep discharges, exhausting lithium ion just isn't a day-to-day -day thing. If you plan on storing your phone for a really long period of time, like packing it away, then yes, you wanna get it to around 50% and shut it down before boxing it up. But otherwise, it's fine, it's really fine. And your phone will turn off before it's utterly depleted anyway. The actual percentages are kind of like a lie or maybe social engineering. Like empty on a gas tank isn't really empty because if we couldn't make it to the gas station after passing that line, so many of us would end up stuck so always. Likewise, 0% isn't really 0%. Phones typically reserve some power to maintain some low level features anyway. Now, if being in the red or even the yellow causes you stress or anxiety either way, or if you just know you'll be out for a while later and wanna make sure you have enough juice for photos, games, whatever it is, then by all means, you charge you. That's the whole entire point. Don't worry about the battery, just take care of you. What about charge cycles? Won't those just murder, death, kill battery health? A charging cycle is just what it sounds like, charging and then discharging your phone completely. It's used as a standard pretty much industry-wide at this point to set expectations on battery health over time, like how many complete cycles you can go through while still retaining up to 80% of the battery's original charging capacity when operating under normal conditions. And I'll get to what's considered abnormal in a literally hot minute, but here's the thing. Modern power management systems are intelligent, artificially so. You can charge up to 80% and then go down to 60%, and you can keep doing that over and over and over again, and it's not gonna use that same 20% of the battery cell over and over again. It's gonna use different parts all the time, distributing all the wear, so to speak. So what those charge cycle numbers are kind of sort of abstracting away is the actual chemical health of your battery. And what I mean by that is you have a battery cell, typically one cell in a phone, sometimes two if they wanna try and add extra capacity through an L shape or charge faster in parallel, or it's a foldable and they have to be physically separated, whatever the reason, the cell charges and discharges as lithium ions move back and forth through electrolytes between a negative and a positive electrode. Over time, as you charge and discharge, secondary reactions happen, and those build up, and that reduces the functional capacity of the cell. It's like gunk building up in the tank. That's why batteries just don't last forever no matter what you do or don't do. They get used, and that uses them up. So what really does damage lithium ion batteries? Not cold, Lithium ion batteries will die faster in extreme cold, basically because it slows down the chemistry and the power delivery just can't keep up with demand. 
But when you return to normal operating temperatures, your phone will return to normal operations just fine. The true supervillain in all this is heat. That'll just break down the chemistry, increase the gunk, and there's no returning from that. That's why what's most damaging to phone batteries these days, all days, is usually us, we, the people, leaving them out in the sun on a hot summer day, like poolside or on dashboards, or putting them in those vent clip car mounts or on top of radiators on cold winter days, or, you know, playing Pokemon Go or making shorts or TikToks out in 110 degree heat with the brightness set to max, the modem screaming to try to hold on to a cellular signal, the processor rendering all the gameplay or video effects, just everything radiating and totally saturating the whole system. And the power management systems on modern phones will gate by doing things like cutting brightness, flashing warnings, even shutting down if it gets too hot, but it will be damaging and will prematurely age out the battery. So rather than micromanaging your charging situation, leave that to the machine and just focus on not leaving your phone out to slow roast in the heat. What about fast charging? Doesn't that cause excessive heat? Faster charging causes more heating, but modern fast charging systems have worked out a bunch of ways to minimize that, including charging dual cells in parallel, accelerating and decelerating the actual power and therefore speed, depending on the charge state, and having the power adapter do a lot of the hot and heavy lifting outside the actual phone enclosure. And Hopefully, if you're charging fast, you're not charging for long. Some fast charging systems even claim better battery health for more charge cycles than the standard chargers of ye old days of yore. And we'll have to wait and see for a few years for real world usage data to just corroborate all that out. But getting better over time is the way these things are supposed to work. And even if there was some long-term trade-off, fast as inconvenient is one of the trade-offs we humans seem to like to make the most. Speaking of which, what about Wireless charging. Wireless charging, aka inductive charging, matches coils inside the device with coils inside the charger, and that type of connection just isn't as efficient as a good old-fashioned plug. But like with fast charging, they're getting really, really good at managing inductive charging and at making it faster as well. Magnetic inductive charging also helps because it locks your phone in place and prevents it from missing, slipping, or otherwise being knocked off the sweet, sweet charging spot, which isn't just hella annoying, but also defeats the whole entire purpose. But here you are literally swapping efficiency, in other words, speed, for even more convenience, not having to plug in. And based on how popular it is, that just seems like a swap most people are super happy and eager to make. Also, and I'm just gonna put this out there, how much is your time and quality of life really worth to you? How much should you be working for your battery and how much should your battery just be working for you? Modern power management systems are really, really good at maximizing battery life and health, way better than most humans could ever be. So sure, if you go completely God mode on it and micromanage everything, including avoiding apps and activities that generate heat, because the stuff we do on our phones can be even more problematic than how we charge or don't charge them, maybe you can eke out some small extra percentage points over the course of a year or few, but will you still even have your phone by then? And if so, will all that time and effort you put in really be worth less than the 50 or 70 bucks it would cost you for a fresh battery swap anyway? So by all means, if you think your time isn't worth that, or you actually just enjoy micromanaging your battery health in some zen way because it feels like an epic win over the system, whatever. Again, you charge you and more power to you, literally. Otherwise, for the vast, vast majority of people, the vast, vaster even majority of time, just let the power management system handle it. Charge when you need to, stop charging when you have to, enjoy your phone and your life. Or if you wanna make everything better for all of us and get involved in all the underlying tech behind all of this, like neural networks, algorithms, and machine learning, all the foundations of modern software and system, then get started with today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is like college level courses made available to everyone and just the best method possible to learn computer science, math, physics, quantum mechanics, game theory, and more in a visual hands-on way. For example, you can learn to program by shifting blocks of pseudocode around and you get immediate feedback, which leads to immediate results. You feel like you're solving puzzles, gaming even, but by investing even a few minutes a day, every day, you'll be amazed at how much progress you can make. And then coding becomes 
way, way less intimidating and just way more accessible. And Brilliant has thousands of lessons just like these with new exclusive content being added every month. So you never have to stop learning. You just have to start. Because here's the thing, here's the secret. Everyone starts somewhere and you can get started right now, today, for free. Just visit brilliant.org slash Rene Ritchie or click on the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and so does hitting up this video to learn more about another big fight, eSIM versus SIM cards and the future of our cell plan swapping. So just hit that up and I'll see you in the next video.